Hola amigos, que tal? And we are now live. I hope everybody is well today, Sunday. And uh, we're gonna have a quick look at some of the news that has caught my attention, some of the comments that I saw over the weekend as well. A few of those we'll look at again today. And uh, just the basic chat about what is going on here in Spain. Now, don't forget to be as active as possible as you can in the chat section. To your right, uh, I'll try to answer some of those chats as well. You've got the option of Super Chat if you want to help the channel, also Super Stickers. So feel free to use those if you like. And uh, as I said, I'll try to highlight some comments and of course the Super Chats will be highlighted. Let's have a look at the chat here at the moment. We've got Iman Amanda, hello Amanda, Steve, Jose Antonio, Dirk and Aitor, hello Aitor. Hello to everybody in the chat section active there. Now we'll get into the news and uh, a few things that caught my attention today at least uh, regarding the energy crisis that we have at the moment and what the government here in Spain is going to do. So we'll have a look at the first piece of news and it is that Sanchez will lower taxes for war affected sectors and speed up renewables projects. So the president of the government, Pedro Sánchez, has announced that the government will lower taxes for sectors affected by the war in Ukraine and will speed up the deadlines and procedures for the implementation of energy efficiency projects and the development of renewable energies. Sánchez has also made a commitment to the regional president to provide economic aid for the collection of refugees. The community presidents, the 17 autonomous community presidents, for their part, agreed to ask the Prime Minister for an extra fund for the reception of refugees and a super-reduced VAT 4% for sectors affected. So the government deciding that it is time to act and is going to help out the main sectors that are affected by the war in Ukraine at the moment, primarily transport sectors, I imagine, and also companies that depend on products from that part of the world that perhaps have to source them from somewhere else and can't get their hands on them. Apparently there's a shortage of uh, sunflower oil here in Spain at the moment. Don't know why because I always seem to see lots of sunflowers around the country when I'm traveling uh, across Spain. But apparently there is a sunflower oil shortage and that is leading to some problems in some sectors. And also, as I mentioned, transport, work, uh, transport workers most likely going to be getting that 4% VAT rate instead of the usual one. Not sure what they pay at the moment, maybe 21%, probably one of the higher VATs, or maybe they have already a, a reduced rate, not sure. Now, so that's uh, what the government has decided to do, and also giving money to the autonomous communities that take in refugees from Ukraine. So the, uh, the uh, president's meeting today, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez with those 17 autonomous community presidents deciding what they need to do to help people out in the country because uh, Spain, like every other country at the moment, suffering these energy prices. Now we have a super sticker. I'll put this on the screen here. Let me see what it says. Uh, de -de 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 -de. Uh, August Zanzak, thank you very much for the super sticker, August. Thank you for that. Now, plenty of action happening here in the chat section. Yvonne from San Fulgencio. Uh, Babs is here. Michael's here. Carrie is here from Bilbao. Uh, Jose Antonio says that there is a shortage of vodka as well. Okay, well, if you're a vodka drinker, Jose Antonio, that's obviously affecting you, not affecting me, luckily, because vodka is not my beverage of choice. We've got uh, Christine. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday to you, Christine. Steve again there. Carol, Matthew, and Chrissy uh, telling us that they have had a little rain in Andalusia. I think, Chrissy, if I'm not mistaken, you're in Granada somewhere, right? So good news that you've got a little bit of rain down there because things are very dry. We'll also have a look at an update on that in a moment as well. Now, the second piece of news today that we will have a look at, transport strike hoax sparks fears of shortages and queues in supermarkets. Queues outside the checkouts of supermarkets and hypermarkets in Malaga have been seen this Saturday. 
since shortly after they opened at nine o'clock in the morning. This is what I expect today, all day, because of the transport strike on Monday, says a cashier at a large shopping center in the capital. In front of her, nine customers wait to pass the products in their trolleys. Although supply difficulties are possible when transport stoppages are called, organizations related to the affected sectors confirm to said radio that it is unlikely to happen on this occasion as it is not supported by the National Road Transport Committee. Now, this is something that we saw last week. Somebody mentioned it here in the chat section that there was going to be a transport strike tomorrow, Monday the 14th, and apparently it was a hoax. Uh, to be honest, I can't get my finger directly on whether it is a hoax or whether it's not because some transport workers are going to go on strike apparently, but it's not going to be a mass strike, which is what the press was reporting last week. So as we saw there in Malaga, uh, people queuing up at the supermarket, buying up in bulk, uh, and there were shortages on shelves apparently at the weekend in some supermarkets around the country. I witnessed it here in Madrid. I went to my local Carrefour supermarket on Friday evening, and there were people with trolleys full of pasta, rice, um, lentils, chickpeas, all of those things that you can store away in the bunker in, in case you can't get hold of them next week. But apparently a hoax, and things are gonna be working more or less as usual, I believe, from what, from what we just read there. So we'll see if there's an update tomorrow, uh, whether in fact there is some type of transport strike, but apparently it's not gonna be, as I said, this massive one that they were planning uh, last week. So uh, a hoax or fake news, as they say. Now back to the chat section here, Sandra. Uh, wish we could send some of our rain to Spain. Uh, now, I don't know where you are, Sandra, but I suppose you're in the UK, maybe, I don't know. But if the UK or uh, Ireland is wet at the moment, then uh, please send us some of that rain. Uh, we'll see in a minute that the good news is for some of the worst uh, affected areas down there in the south, there is rain forecast for today. I don't know whether it's come already. Uh, we might have a look at, in the chat and see if we can see that. And uh, also uh, throughout next week, I think Monday through Friday, there is going to be some quite uh, rainy weather down there in Andalusia, I believe, in the Malaga region. All right, let's go through the comments again. Uh, greetings from Valencia, lie down there, Stan from uh, Poland, Stan. Hello, Stan, how are things in Poland at the moment? Carol from Estepona, we had rain, yay. All right, good, Carol, good to see that you are getting some rain down there in the Malaga region. Uh, Patrick's in California. And uh, Steve here says that it's raining in La Cala Mijas, again in Malaga. So some rain starting to fall on that part of world. And as we know, uh, there is uh, plenty of need for it. <clears throat> Steve says, got to stock the bunker up. Uh, yeah, Steve, a lot of people with that uh, mentality at the moment that they need to stock up on the supply, similar to what we saw a couple of years ago, if we remember at the beginning of the pandemic when people went crazy buying things like toilet paper. Here in uh, Spain, what I've noticed that's flying off the shelves is olive oil. I've seen people walking out with 20, 30 bottles, bottles of olive oil. And in, and in fact, some supermarkets have had to put a limit on the amount that you can buy. So people going crazy at the moment. Uh, preparing for the worst, I imagine, transport strikes and other supply problems here. Now, third piece of news that we'll look at. Let me have a look here quickly. Uh, Alfonso Fernández Manueco, who is the president of Castilla y León, says, I'm proud of the program with Vox. It's neither sexist, nor homophobic, nor racist, nor radical. And when asked the question, what in particular are you proud of, that you have avoided the most radical positions of Vox? And he says that, I don't like to label or judge people and parties. What I can talk about is this pact, which is neither racist, sexist, homophobic, nor radical, nor is there any of what is said. I invite you to read it. I ask that the government be judged by what we say and do. We have been able to find a balance that allows both of us to feel comfortable. There is political stability. Now, this, of course, uh, all stems from the coalition government that has been formed 
now in the autonomous community of Castilla and Leon between the Partido Popular, which was the ruling party there before. They were in coalition with the Citizens Party, but they called early elections. The Citizens Party basically lost all seats except one in that area, and Vox was the party that grew. And of course, now the Partido Popular has had to uh, go into government with Vox. And as Mr. Manueco says there, um, according to him, it's not going to be a radical, um, uh, well, they're not going to have any radical policies there when it comes to sexism, homo homophobia, homophobia, racism, and uh, they're not going to be radical. And uh, this was a, a bit of a shock for the left here in Spain because they're, what, they're worried about that Spain's falling back into its old ways. Uh, I don't know whether that's the case or not, because as I said on Friday, the central government here is also in a coalition government with what people could consider a radical left government. Uh, sorry, a radical left party. And here we have a radical hard far right, if you like, party coalition with the PP. And uh, according to the Partido Popular, this could be the way forward in different parts of the country, coalitions with Vox. So we'll see what happens with regard to that over the next uh, few months, and we'll see whether or not it is uh, a radical coalition government, as some people think, people on the left think that it will be, people on the right, as we saw there, don't think that it will be much of a difference. So we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Now back into the comment section here, let's have a look. Uh, what have we got here? William from Tennessee. Uh, Dirk says, Dirk down there in Benidorm, I think, or Bia uh, Hoyosat, Dirk. We're going to give a Ukrainian mother and her son uh, a spare bedroom and bathroom. Man, oh man, what a lot of hate I got from some other Belgians and Dutch living here. Okay, Dirk, I don't know what all the hate was about, you taking in a, a family down there. I think you mentioned it last week that that's what you were going to do. Your daughter, I think, uh, suggested it, and uh, you've gone ahead and got in touch with somebody who's gonna set you up with a family in need. Good, now what else have we got here? Uh, Chrissy, we'll put Chrissy's comment up here. Hi Stu, I live in Salar near Granada. We are supposedly having rain every day. Uh, I've given up uh, wine and chocolate for Lent. I'm not religious though. All right, Chrissy, maybe on a, on a diet there, uh, giving up <laughs> wine and chocolate, okay, for Lent. Any other people that are uh, going through that process of Lent at the moment, uh, I can tell you that I am not. So good luck with that, Chrissy, giving up those two things that probably you like, wine and chocolate, as many people do. All right, let's have a look at one here from Michael. Transport strike, I ordered a tin of Cadbury chocolates on the 15th of November to give to, local, uh, to, give to a local medical center as a Christmas gift. Correos delivered it last Wednesday. Yeah, Michael, it was probably stuck in the, uh, the customs part of Correos there. I don't know whether you had to pay extra money or not to get it out, but uh, some people do complain that um, getting packages sent from outside the European Union is not easy, as uh, there's a system called, um, or uh, I don't know whether it's a company or an offshoot of Correos called ADT, I think it's ADT Postales, and uh, basically they stop everything and try to get um, uh, extra payments out of people if you send things into Spain from outside the European Union. So uh, yeah, it took you a while to get your hands on those chockies. 15th of November, now what's the date today? The 13th of uh, March, so long time for those chocolates, Michael. All right, good. Now the final piece of news that we'll look at today, uh, this one here about the rain in Spain. And we can see that Spain's Met Office issues amber weather alert for Costa del Sol. The arrival of a storm from this Sunday, the 13th, to the southwest of the Spanish mainland will bring with it heavy and generalized rainfall throughout Spain, according to the State Meteorological Agency, AM Met. It is expected to arrive in the afternoon and remain stationary in the southern regions during the first days of next week, leaving significant rainfall in Andalusia and the central areas, according to the AMET's forecast. So that's that weather that we were talking about, and apparently, according to a few people in the chat section here in Andalusia, it has already arrived. Today in Madrid, it was a, a fantastic day. We were expecting rain today, but um, a bit in the morning, but 
fairly dry all day and also a very pleasant temperature. Uh, able to spend time outside with a, uh, a light um, jumper or whatever you want to call this thing on, a hoodie, and uh, no problems at all outside today here in Madrid. So fantastic weather. I think rain's forecast for tomorrow, the next day, the day after. So things a bit rainy this week, but uh, as we all know, we need the rain. All right, back into the chat section. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if we can find something else. One here from Mr. Schnrub. Hi, Stu, what's something about Australia that you really miss? Uh, what do I miss about Australia? Well, I miss swimming in the Indian Ocean, to be honest, uh, mister. Uh, that's one thing that I do miss, the, the warm summer waters of the Indian Ocean. And there's a few other things I miss, family, of course. Uh, but um, things that I miss, well, things come and go, some things come to mind. Uh, I miss just basically the open spaces of Australia, and that's something that I've spoken about before. And obviously, when you come from a country like Australia, you are lucky with that open space aspect that you can drive uh, an hour outside of any capital city and find uh, basically nobody. Whereas here in Spain, it's very difficult to do, or at least it is here in Madrid. It's probably easy in some other parts of the country, but in Madrid, one of the biggest autonomous communities population-wise, difficult to find solitude, and that's something that I miss about Australia. And I also miss a good Aussie pie, to be honest, every now and again, a good Aussie pie with tomato sauce. That's something that I do miss. But um, I can sometimes get my hands on them at the local supermarket here, uh, some British pies, they're not 100% the same, but they're not, uh, they're not all that different. And uh, pasties as well, pies and pasties as we say, sausage rolls, all of those things that are not healthy are things that I miss from Australia. But swimming in the Indian Ocean, probably the number one thing because as I said, of those warm waters. Now, what uh, are we gonna do? Let's have a look at a, a comment from the video the other day. One here from West Ham 66. Ola Stu, when I moved to Orihuela Costa and got my first car, December 2020, petrol was one euro six cents per litre. Filled up last Wednesday, the 20, March, sorry, March 2022, one euro 68 per litre. Went to Orihuela City, almost 25 minutes away the next day, Thursday, and most petrol stations were charging one ninety one per litre. Yeah, West Ham, a bit of a, a price hike there as far as fuel is concerned here in Spain since you arrived in 2020. And of course, when you arrived in 2020, that pandemic year, fuel prices were at uh, some of the lowest that I've seen for a long time. I think I filled up here uh, in Madrid for diesel for one euro uh, a litre. And the other day I saw diesel at the same petrol station for 1.96. So 96 cents more expensive than it was 18 months ago, more or less. So uh, yeah, that's the reality of the situation at the moment. Um, West Ham 66, uh, prices on their way up. And if you are a car, a car owner here, uh, you're being hit at the fuel pump or the Bowser, as we say in Australia. Don't know whether you use that term or not in the UK. But uh, we are getting smashed at the moment, and uh, I don't know if there's any relief in sight. Somebody said today, I went to a football game with my son, and somebody said that prices are going to come down next week. Not sure if that's true or not, but uh, definitely a worrying time for uh, car owners and people that make a living with their car, or commuters basically, having to look for alternatives, trains, metro, buses, any other way to get there, rather than using their car at the moment. So not good, but anyway, what can we do? Let's have a look at another comment. Steve says, uh, happy St. Paddy's Day this week. Yeah, apparently that is the case. Uh, I've never really followed St. Patrick's, I've never really followed St. Patrick's Day given the fact that I'm not Irish, but uh, I don't even know the exact day to be honest, but uh, I did read in the paper that it is coming up this week. Steve and uh, people are looking forward to be able to celebrating again after, uh, I don't know whether 2021 it was possible, 2020, uh, I don't think so either. So people looking to be able to celebrate again St. Patrick's Day. So uh, I hope uh, all of the Irish uh, people have a fantastic St. Patrick's Day. All right, good. Now we'll have a look at another comment here. 
One here from Joseph. I love your alien comment. I was thinking of something a bit more colourful, but probably better left unsaid. I hope to return to Spain one day for good. Toledo, Avila, Segovia all seem like good small towns in which to settle down. Que tenga un buen día. All right, Joseph, referring to my alien comment the other day, when I, th I think I said all politicians are lizards, but of course I was joking because that's um, a rumor that circles around the internet that politicians are lizards. There's a pretty um, high profile conspiracy theorist that believes that and uh, he likes to publish books on the topic. But I made a, uh, a joke because I think it was Jose Antonio who said um, that uh, with all of the things that have gone on this year, the only thing that I didn't mention were the aliens landing, and uh, that's it. And when it comes to the other part of your comment there, Joseph, uh, looking to come back and live in Spain for good, Toledo, Avila, Segovia, all of those cities around Madrid, Toledo to the south, Segovia to the north, and Avila to the northwest. So yeah, all good options, uh, not big cities. Toledo is um, uh, a medium-sized city, I think. Segovia, Avila, good quality of life. Avila, fantastic tapas. But of course, you're uh, gonna be dealing with that cold Castilla, uh, Castilian weather, which is a little bit chilly, in my opinion, in the winter months. But anyway, it is what it is. Now, a few more chats here, let's have a look. One here from Steve, great video on the five best cities to live and work, they looked amazing. Yeah, that was a video that I published yesterday, I think, on some of the better cities in this country to work in, in my opinion. Um, just based on experience, basically, I didn't go into too many statistics on the fact, but I think all of those cities that I mentioned, Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, Malaga, Bilbao, cities where you can find jobs. And uh, Valencia, apparently the labor market down there is getting better for certain sectors. Malaga's got an interesting tech scene at the moment, apparently. And of course, Madrid, capital city, Barcelona, another big city in Bilbao, an industrial city in the north of the country. I think those are some of the better ones, but uh, please feel free to add your 20 cents worth on some of the better ones. All right, now we've got another comment here. Let me have a look here from Patrick. Stu, there is a website where they give another place on the other side of the world that has exactly the same climate. For me in Fullerton, they, they give Perth uh, exactly the same climate. Um, okay, well, I don't know what the other place you're talking about there, Fullerton. Uh, maybe that's the case. I don't know where Fullerton is, but Perth has a very good climate. That's one of the things that it has. And as I said, when you swim in that Indian Ocean on a nice summer's day, 32, 33 degrees, fantastic experience. If you don't get bitten by a shark, that is. Now, we'll have a look at another comment here. That's Joseph, Joseph's comment. One here from Chris. Hi, Stu, I also prefer the eastern side of Malaga, better atmosphere and cheaper. Do you visit El Palo Pedre, Pedregal, Pedregalejo? There's a bar there called La Tortuga that does a great cocktail. Um, yeah, Chris, I do know that side of Malaga because I used to go down there a fair bit a few years ago. My parents-in-law had a house there in a place called Rincón de la Victoria, which is next to El Palo. And uh, we went to a few restaurants over the years in El Palo um, and, of course, Rincón de la Victoria. And heading east towards uh, Torre del Mar, uh, Belez Malaga, all of those places there. And uh, I said the other day that for me, it's a lot different to the other side of Malaga, which, which I always found very crowded. I went to Marbella one time and it was incredibly crowded, houses everywhere, and it was a bit more open, less expensive, as you say, and um, more of a, uh, a Spanish tourism, I think, around places like Rincón de la Victoria. In fact, a lot of people from Malaga City had houses in Rincón de la Victoria, so it was quite a, a Spanish feel to it. So that was something that I liked about that area. And of course, the weather, very, very good also in that part of Spain, especially the winter months. All right, and we'll have a look at uh, one final comment here, 24 minutes, so we'll start to wrap it up soon. One here from uh, 
Chichester. In Portugal, prices for diesel tomorrow will be around €2.25 and petrol €2.20. LPG is around €35 Euros for a regular bottle, €120 for a large bottle. Portugal petrol and fuel prices. So as we can see, 225. So well over that, um, well over that two euro mark. Uh, I imagine that that's a fairly common thing in Portugal because Portugal is normally 20, 25, sometimes 30 cents more expensive, more expensive per litre for fuel compared to Spain. A lot of Portuguese people cross the border if they live close to it to fill up in Spain. And uh, I imagine they are still doing that today because of those expensive prices there. So, yeah, difficult times for countries like Portugal, uh, difficult times for people for countries like Spain, because as we know, the salaries are not high in these countries. And uh, that's one of the big problems. And for example, if you're on minimum salaries in a country like Spain and Portugal, having to pay these higher fuel prices really uh, hitting the wallet at the moment. So not good news there. But uh, as I said, we'll see what happens over the next week or two, whether the government can indeed do something to maybe to bring fuel prices down. Don't know if it's possible, but I'm sure that they will try. And uh, as we said, Portugal over the two euro mark, Spain about to hit the two euro mark in a lot of places. 98 octane fuel already crashed over that two euro barrier. And uh, it's just a matter of time, I think, before the other fuels get across that barrier as well. So we'll see. All right, good. Now we'll go through the chat section, have another quick look and see if we can find anything. Um, let me just have a look here quickly. What have we got? Let me have a look. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Claire Howe, she says, I, lived, I loved Perth when I traveled around Oz quite a few years ago, could easily have stayed. Yeah, a lot of people do stay down there, uh, Claire. They like the uh, Australian way of life, especially the weather. And if you're an English speaker, of course, it is a country fairly easy to uh, blend in down there in Australia, especially a place like uh, Western Australia, which is um, a fairly big state with a small population. So thanks for the comment there, Claire. Uh, what else we got here? Um, one here from Carol. What does Carol say? She says, I laugh when my, friend, when my friends in Florida complain about $4 plus per gallon. Yeah, um, I think when you talk about per gallon or per litre, there's a huge difference. If you're paying, what is it, $4 a gallon, what does that work out to? Around a dollar a litre. So still a lot cheaper than we're paying at the moment. So but uh, then again, I think the States has always been known for cheaper fuel, fuel prices than Europe in general. Now, uh, we're coming to an end. We've only got a few minutes left. We'll go have a look at a, a couple of uh, comments today. Diablo says, uh, how come no super chat today? Got no idea, uh, Diablo. I imagine that it's active. Nobody wants to contribute. There's no problem. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, another comment just quickly. Uh, Nikki says here, good evening, Stuart. Uh, I will have to catch up. I am late. No problem, Nikki. Doesn't matter if you're on time or not. No problem. These uh, live shows can be seen at a later date. There's no problem. There's an automatic recording put up on. There's an automatic recording put up on YouTube immediately afterwards, so it's fairly easy. You can watch it any time you want. Uh, one here from uh, Marie. When do you think all travel restrictions to Spain from the UK end? I'm not vaxxed. Well, to be honest, Marie, I've got no idea when they're going to end because a lot of the um, restrictions that we have at the moment for people coming into the country, uh, are, well, I don't know whether the I don't know what the situation is with the with the not being vaccinated. I think you can come to Spain now from the UK if you have a recovery certificate. So you don't need to be vaccinated now from the UK, I believe. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the chat section, but I believe a recovery certificate now is all that you need. So we spoke about that a couple of weeks ago. So if you've had COVID in the last six months or something like that, and if you're not vaccinated, you can come into Spain now. And of course, from other countries, other European countries, all you need to have is a negative test PCR or antigen. When are those rules going to go away? I've got no idea. It's going to depend on the health crisis, whether the health crisis gets under control and whether the 
people that control us think that it's under control enough so that those, restric those restrictions can go away and people can move about uh, cities and places freely without having to worry about the coronavirus or COVID-19 threat. So when that's going to happen, I've got no idea because I'm reading in the paper at the moment that there's a sub-variant of Omicron which people are worried about, but um, I've got no idea. This has just been going on for too long, in my opinion, and uh, there's no way that we can um, there's no way that we can uh, know when it's going to come to an end. Unfortunately, super chat Diablo, thank you very much. Cause you're worth it. LOL, thank you very much, uh, Diablo. You are a valued supporter of the channel. Thank you very much for that super chat. Now I'm going to start to um, wrap the video up. I've been going on uh, a while, more than 30 minutes, so I'm going to start to wrap it up. Let me have a look here quickly. There's one here from Proud Brave One. Let me have a look at this one just here quickly from the chat. I apologize if this question was answered before and I missed it. Is the people government in Spain too worried about the events in Ukraine, Eastern Europe? Um, yeah, I would say that people are worried about it. It's the number one conversation whenever I see people, whether it's with friends or the other parents in my son's football team, it's the number one topic of conversation. People have different opinion, opinions, of course, about the topic. But uh, in general, people are worried not only about the situation there, but also future situations um, uh, or future scenarios that could uh, stem from this conflict and also they're worried about the general cost of living increasing as a result as well. And uh, nobody wants a conflict uh, as far as I know. So it is a topic that people are worried about. And of course, the government is worried about it as well because it's creating things that they can't control. And uh, with an election next year, they would like to be able to control uh, all of the uh, things leading into that election, but uh, with inflation, the rate that it is, 7.6% last month, could be even more. Those are things that no government wants to deal with, uh, proud, brave ones. So yes, the answer to your question, people here in Spain are worried about what's happening in that part of the world. So I'll wrap the video up. Thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions today in the chat section. I appreciate that, 200 and pe 222 people online at the moment. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Carol says, where's Nick? I'll just finish with this one here quickly because I've got an update on the Nick uh, situation. Nick is, or well, he was in the UK. He was here in Madrid last week. We had lunch and dinner together. So we met for the first time in person. Nice guy, Nick. And he went to the UK. I think he's back now in Spain. So, but um, hopefully we'll have Nick back on the channel shortly, telling us some of his stories. So uh, thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions. As I said in the super chat, thanks everybody that uh, the super sticker and the super chat there from Diablo. I'll see you all next Thursday, I believe, at seven thirty. So uh, have a good day, everybody, and uh, we'll be in contact then. Hasta luego.